So good afternoon and welcome to St. John the Baptist Catholic Church in Costa Mesa to our Holy Mass in the extraordinary form, our Latin Mass. Today we're celebrating the fifth resumed Sunday after the Epiphany, but the propers you were given, which say 25th Sunday after Pentecost, are correct. Um, all right, here are our announcements. Our next Young Adult Candlelight Mass is this coming Thursday, November the 11th, but it will begin at 8.30 p.m. here in the church, so that's a little bit later than we've been doing them, at, but this, just this month, it'll start at 8.30 p.m., Candlelight Mass. Uh, Father Allen from the Abbey is the one who celebrates that Mass. It's our Young Adult Mass. The Monday night adoration and prayer service will take place as scheduled this Monday, tomorrow, the 8th, at 7.25 p.m. However, we will not have the adoration and prayers on Monday, November 15th. So yes, tomorrow the 8th, but not on November 15th. And there's little schedules uh, posted around the church. Members of our Knights of Columbus are all at the church doors as you exit to take donations for their annual fundraising drive for the intellectually disabled. Our Knights of Columbus are also taking orders for Christmas wreaths at their table outside the church. They also have Advent candles and Christmas cards available for purchase. And there are beautiful religious goods, as you probably saw when you came in, on sale outside the church after Mass to support our parish religious education program. Today's Holy Mass is for the... And please check the bulletin and our website for other announcements. Today's Holy Mass is offered for the intentions of David and Rebecca Espinoza. Now the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Asperges me.
Ostende nobis Domine misericordiam tuam. Domine exaudiorazione mea. Dominus vobiscum. Oremus, exaudinus Domine Sancte Pater Omnipotens Eterne Deus, et mitre dignere Sanctum Angelum Tum de Celis, qui custodiat foviat protegat, visiterat cu defendat omnes habitantes in hoc habitaculo, per Christum Dominum Nostrum.
Dominus vobiscum, et cum spiritu tuo, oremus, familiam tuam quesimus domne continua pietate custodi, ut quae in sola spe gratia celestis inititur, tua sempre protectione, protectione muni amur, per dominum nostrum Iesum Christum filium tuum, Qui te cum vivere et regna d'unitate, Spiritus Sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Lexio Christo le Beati Pauli Apostoli, ad colosenses, fratres, Induite vos sicut electi Dei, sancti et electi, viscera misericordia binditatem, humilitatem modestiam, pacientiam, supportantes in vicem, et donantes vos mitipsis, sequis adversus alicum habet qua raleam. Sicut et Dominus donavit vobis, ita et vos. Super omnia autem hec, caritatem habet et, quod est vinculum perfectionis, et pax Christi exultet in cordibus vestris, in qua et vocati estis in uno corpore. Et gratii est hote, verbum Christi habetet, in vobis abundantur, it in homis abientia, dotentes et comment nodentes, vos mitipsos, salmis, 
Him is et canticis spiritualibus, in gratia cantantes in cordibus vestris. Deo, omne quorcumque facitis in verbo aut in opere, omnia in nomine Domini, Jesu Christi, gratia sagentes Deo et Patri, per Iesum Christum Dominum nostrum. Liberasti nos Domine, ex affligentibus nos, et eos minus oterunt componisti. Dominus vobiscum, et cum spiritu tuo, sequentia sancti evangelii secundum Matteo. Gloria ti, Domine. In illo tempore dixit Iesus turbis parabola mag, simile factum es regnum celorum homini, quis seminabit bonum semina in agro suo, cum autem dormirent homines, venit inimicus eius, et super seminabit sit sania in medio tritici et abit. Cum autem crevisset herba, et fructum fecisset, tung aparuerunt sit et sit zania. Accidentes autem servi patris familias, dixerunt ei, Domine non e bonum semen seminasti in agro tuo. Unde ergo habet sit zania. Et ait illis, inimicus homo hoc fecis. Servi autem dixerunt ei, vis imis et collegimus ea. Et et ait, non ne forte collegentes sit sania, eradicetis simucum eis et triticum. 
Sinite utraque crescere usque ad mesem, et in tempore mesis dicam mesoribus. Colligite primum sit sania, et aligate ea in fasciculos ad componendum. Triticum autem congregate in ore meum. The Lord says, I think thoughts of peace and not of affliction. Words from today's introit. On the 11th day of November of 1918, hostilities on the Western Front ceased. And the Great War, the First World War, ended. The date would be forever marked as Armistice Day. This coming Thursday is Veterans Day. And we certainly pray for the repose of the souls of all soldiers and civilians who have died because of war. Now we hope that we can tell the truth about whether the First World War or any wars was a necessary evil, or just simply evil? Indeed, was any war a necessary evil, or just simply evil? Individual acts of bravery and self-sacrifice during a war can be good, extremely good. But war itself is not good. It is an evil. And there are some veterans who strongly believe that we should not use the word sacrifice for the soldiers who lost their lives in war. In the secular world, we have many casual uses of sacrifice. A sacrifice fly in baseball, the sacrifice of the dessert in a weight program, a sacrifice of the golf game, to be with the children. In a sacrifice, a person freely gives up something. The veterans who strongly feel that we should not use the word sacrifice for their comrades who died in war, point out that in war, soldiers seldom give their lives. Their lives, rather, are taken. War, the use of maximum deadly force between large groups of people. War is never good. It is terrifying. And it leaves huge permanent scars. By now, we have become aware of the physical and psychological wounds, oftentimes lifelong suffered by those who engaged in war, especially with the tragic and unnecessary deaths by suicide of too many veterans. That is why very few countries or individuals ever start wars. In the instances where countries do start a war, they invariably try to say that the other side provoked it that starting a war was really an honorable defense against some prior evil. And once a war has begun, Christian values are pretty much thrown out the window. Gentleness, generosity, forgiveness, love of enemy, turning the other cheek, are all core Christian values. But in a war, they are not applicable. 
Once a war has started, citizens of the nations involved are caught up in it whether they want to be or not. By citizens, we are not referring to just civilians who are killed as collateral damage, which is, of course, one of the greatest evils and terrors of war. By citizens, we are also referring to Christians who want to practice forgiveness of the enemy, but are not permitted to do so, for it is seen as treason. In this and in so many ways, war is an evil that is bigger than all of us. War almost never ends in peace, at least not in the kind of peace where two former enemies embrace one another and sincerely wish one another well. No war must end in defeat for one and victory for the other. Some truces or ceasefires are usually only a chance to regroup and to rearm, to fight again another day, until eventually one of the sides gives up, falls apart, and can no longer fight. Once a war has begun, we as a citizen have very few choices. We can help our side win, or we can help the other side, or we can run away, which in the long run helps the other side. The evil of war is so great that we are forced to fight or to betray. There is very little middle ground. Fundamentally, since a war denies us the true Christian duty of forgiveness, we must choose between two evils and support the side that has the most good and the least evil. In other words, when caught up in the evil storm of war, we Christians must choose the side that has the least evil, and then we must act with courage. On Thursday, we not only remember, but also pray for all, soldier or civilian, Christian or not, whose lives were taken for the benefit of others, who struggled to uphold the greater good and resisted the greater evil. In establishing Armistice Day, Congress asked that the day be dedicated to the cause of world peace. Reaction against the great suffering related to the First World War resulted in a number of reforms. But we need to remember that peace is not merely the absence of war, nor can it be reduced solely to the maintenance of a balance of power between enemies, and nor is it brought about by dictatorship. Peace comes about only through our fidelity to Christ, the Prince of Peace, to his teachings, and by our life live in accord with his commandments. Let us also remember that the Blessed Virgin told us to make sacrifices and to pray the rosary for world peace. Let us not despair in the midst of all the conflicts we see in this world. Let the words of St. Paul confirm us in our faith and hope. He wrote, To God who is able to accomplish all things in a measure far beyond we ask or conceive, to him be glory and to his Son, Jesus Christ, down through all the ages of time. Amen.
Predo in unum Deum. Dominus vobiscum, et cum spiritus tuo, oremus. Te
Er omnia secula seculorum. Dominus obiscum. Et cum spiritu tu. Sursum corda. Gratias agamus, Domino Deo nostro. Vere dignum et justum et secum et salutare, nos tibi semper urubique gratias agere. Domine Sancte Pater Omnipotens, Eterne Deus, qui comunigenito filio tuo, et Spiritus Sancto Unus est Deus, Unus est Dominus. Non in unius singularitate personae, sed in unius, Trinitate substantiae. Quod enim de tua gloria, revelante te credimus, hoc de filio tuo, hoc de spiritu sancto, sine differentia, discretionis sentimus. Ut in confessione vere semper teneque deitatis, et in personis proprietas, et in essentia unitas, et in maestate adoretur equalitas. Quam laudan angeli atque archangeli, Cherubim quoque ac serafim, qui non cessant clamare cotidie, una voce dicentes.
Nobis quoque peccatoribus. Eromnia secula secula horum. Oremus, recepte salutaribus moniti, et divina institutione formati, audemus dicere, Pater noster qui es in celis, Sanctificetur nomen tuum, adveniat renium tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicur in cielo et in terra. Panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis odie, et dimite nobis de vita nostra, Sicut et nos dimitimus evitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem. Per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Pax Domini sit semper vobiscum.
Mistria te vestri omnipotens Zeus, de misis peccatis vestris, perdugat vos ad vitam eternum, indulgens absolutionum et remissionum peccatorum vestorum, tribuat vovis omnipotens et misericus dominibus. Ecce agnus se, ecce quitolit peccato mundi, Domine non sum dignus, rinteres subtectum meum, set tantum dic verbo et senabitur anima mea. Domine non sum dignus, rinteres subtectum meum, set tantum dic verbo et senabitur anima mea. Domine non sum dignus, rinteres subtectum meum, set tantum dic verbo et senabitur anima mea.
Dominus Vobiscum. Oremus, quesimus omnipotens Deus ut ilius salutaris capiamus effectum, cuius per ec misteria pinius accepimus, per Dominum nostrum Iesum Christum filium tuum, qui tecum viveret regnat in unitate Spiritus Sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Dominus Vobiscum, et Benedicat vos, omnipotens Deus, Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen.